Well, hello and welcome back, my Royal Rogues. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Royal Rogue. And tonight, we have a new attempt from the Montecito morons to validate their long-lost royal status for their own gain. The website Sussex.com is online, and well, I'm going to expose all the desperation that's featured in here so you don't have to. First thing that I notice is that it severely lacks important information and events such as when the Duchess of Sausages did her collaboration with a Dior and the Sausages perfume was born, or the schedule of Megan's traditional Taco Tuesday is nowhere to be found. How, how are we supposed to know when to enjoy our tacos? You can't even find the Duke and Duchess of Sausages official portraits. I mean, what kind of website launch is if we cannot see these magnificent images? Or in the events department at that time when Megan won the Smollett of the Year. How brave, how courageous, nowhere to be found. Or the unlimited compassion in action of Megan overseeing sausage plantations worldwide, being, of course, an expert in the matter. This is the least that we could expect. Maybe I should make my own Harry and Megan website to show them how it's done. But meanwhile, one of the most important features of this new website is the bios of both Harry and Meghan. And in the most unsurprising turn of events, you can see for yourself that Meghan's bio and achievements is almost twice as long as Harry's. Well, you can imagine that since Meghan has been everything from blogger to self-made millionaire to yacht specialist to acting prodigy to ex-royal then there's a lot to unpack in there. Now, for all that they spent on their brand new online facade, they were really cheap on the domain reservation side. For those of you who don't know, the domain is the name of the site itself. In this case, Sussex.com. That's something that you have to pay year over year. And the best practice is to pay five or 10 years in the future. Well, the Montecito grifters decided to pay for just one year, which is the minimum amount of time. And you might notice that the site was originally registered in 1995. And it's because the original owner of the domain was a company called Sussex Systems Incorporated from Washington, D.C. I don't think they have anything to do with the Montecito morons or the royal family for that matter. And according to Archive.org, the site's owners stopped updating it in 2013. So what obviously happened is that Harry and Meghan bought the site from them. And according to GoDaddy, which is the company that is actually hosting the site itself, and one of the cheapest solutions on the market, by the way, the estimate to buy the Sussex.com domain from the previous owner was more than $22,000. But that's nothing for a self-made millionaire, right? What confirms right off the gate that despite all their claims of leaving the royal family, the monarchy, the firm, and the UK behind, these two are going to keep milking royal clout at least for the immediate future, as the website prominently uses Meghan's coat of arms, designed, paid for, and assigned by the racist British monarchy. Yeah, because common sense is never something that goes well with these two. Some of you have mentioned that it doesn't feature Harry but Meghan's coat of arms. But, but the left side of Meghan's coat of arms includes all of Harry's features. Here you have the Prince and Princess of Wales back in May 2018 revealing the Duchess of Sausages design. Little would they know that they were going to merge and grift out of this and every other royal sign for a long time. And despite wanting a normal life for their family, you know that if Meghan is using the kids' titles everywhere, she's going to use the coat of arms everywhere. And I mean it. And by the way, I I'm sure this has been said before, but upon closer inspection of Meghan's coat of arms, the sign will. Let's say that whoever designed it has a wicked sense of humor. Thanks for your service, dear sir or madam. Uh, two things are completely absent from this new website. Any mention of the royal family. Zero. Zilch. Nada. And it's interesting uh, to, uh, that's obvious that they want to keep the royal grifting running. 
Because if the Bob Marley movie premiere exposed anything and the NFL awards at Las Vegas exposed anything, is that this is their rent a royal face. Harry and Meghan will get headline coverage no matter what, no matter what they do. So companies must have noticed that they can weaponize that infamy for their own gain. You just have to pay the price. Harry or Meghan show up, and it is guaranteed that the entire world is going to know about your event. And the other thing that is missing is any way to keep in touch. No email and no phone, obviously. There is no way if you want to rent them for your next gender reveal party and get a quote. Maybe this is some kind of mafia. You have to contact Marcus Anderson first. Uh, 1-800-CALL-DORIA. I don't know. The site pretends to be about their causes and their spectacular bios. But this is only a facade to keep grifting off the royal family and everything royal. That said, they are using it to have this kind of legitimacy about the royal status using Meghan's coat of arms, but without mentioning the royal family, of course. As this anonymous rogi puts it, they have some nerves striking while the king is ill. It's what they did to the late queen, too. The visit to London was a push affair, not an invitation. He announced he, he was on his way. It's what they do, same as the whole Lilibet naming controversy. They push, they don't ask. And according to Tass, it's spot on with this one. I'm beginning to think Harry's mercy dash to see the king was to make it look like he had the king's approval before the new website was launched. They are going back to pretending that they are working royals. I do not believe the king has sanctioned them to be half in, half out. And speaking of push, it so happened that Meghan has signed up with Lemonada Media. I didn't know that they existed, by the way. To launch a new show and distribute our swipes to all platforms. I mean... I was only taking a look, thanks to uh, Roger Lee Sage, uh, the kind of shows uh, that this Lemonada Media had. And I can only say that they look woke as F, all right? So, Megan, if you, you're listening, remember what they say. If you go woke, you go broke. So keep an eye on that. But my real question is, why would someone actually need to sign up with a podcast network nowadays? Th this is something that most people don't know. But... Starting a, a podcast is exactly as creating a new YouTube channel. It's for free. And if you are famous and people know that you created a podcast and you're uploading episodes, people are going to watch it, whatever it is. That's how we got the Joe Rogan podcast and Lex Friedman podcast. And it's supposed that you have actual productions, right? You don't need another production company to be overseeing production unless you are not doing anything or you only work 52 hours a year. My estimate is that we will be seeing our swipes next season by around 2029. So, my royal rogues, I would love to know what do you think about this in the comments. And remember to download my free battle language tips in the description of this video if you want to read anyone like a book. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the royal rogue. Much love and bliss.